Hey, this is Elizabeth Potts Weinstein. Today I'm going to talk about how to avoid copyright strikes when you're using music as part of your YouTube videos. So really there's two issues when you're using music in a YouTube video. One is the legal issue and the second is avoiding the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> Okay, so that's something to remember is if you're using music in a YouTube video, you may have an argument that your use is fair use under copyright law, but that doesn't mean you're going to avoid the YouTube algorithm. The YouTube algorithm isn't a person. It is a computer that is searching every single video on YouTube all the time looking for music and it will find music that copyright holders have either have the lyrics or the music uh, in the Google system already uploaded there and already have a copyright claim on it and it will match that up and it could be in the background of the video where it's just playing ambiently in the room or it could be something that you've actually put in as when you were editing so you want to make your life not complicated and it'd be better for you to not just avoid you know be able to win a legal argument but also avoid the algorithm so what we're going to talk about today is not really going into the legal details of fair use because the thing is you don't want to have to hire a lawyer and argue with the monolith of youtube the details of copyright law. What you want to do is avoid the algorithm triggering you, or if it does the first tier of triggering you, then you can set things up such that it automatically untriggers and your video can go either just not get taken down and also still be monetized. So let's take the first scenario, which is if you have popular music that's in your video. So it could be popular music that you specifically load into your video as the process of editing, or it could be music that's just in the room. And YouTube scans your video and finds that this popular music is playing. So if you have a video that has music on it, you may get a copyright claim. And this is how it looks inside your studio you'll have a copyright claim here in this column and under restrictions and then you can click on see details and you'll find out the information about this copyright claim this is the only copyright claim i have in any of my videos and it's from a video from 2009 back when i didn't know better even though i'm a lawyer but i still should have known better this video had a song by katy perry sung by katy perry called hot and cold in just a section of the video. Now, I didn't get a copyright strike against it because who the, per, the entity that owns the copyright, which is UMG, well, actually EMI owns it, but UMG is administrating it, they are okay with people using it on YouTube because they want to make money off of it. So, luckily for me, I didn't get a copyright strike. But it means that this video is not eligible for the partner program. As of the time I'm recording this video, I'm not currently in the YouTube partner program because I don't have a, enough subscribers. But even if I was, this video, I wouldn't get the revenue from it. What would happen is the copyright owner gets the revenue. And actually, right now, this video could have ads on it, even though I don't have ads on my channel, and the money from it would go to the copyright owner. But what happens is, is in YouTube, it actually gives me the option to swap it out. So if I have this on here and it says that there's an audio claim, I can swap it out. And this is something that I actually am planning to do. I didn't do it yet because I wanted to record this video, but I'm planning to replace this song with something that's in the YouTube library. And the reason is, is that right now, EMI is cool with this video having this song and because they want to monetize it themselves generally not this video they don't care about this video but because it doesn't have that many viewers but all the videos that use a song but they might change their mind in the future and if they change their mind in the future they could put a copyright strike on me if you get three strikes you're out you get three copyright strikes they can just shut down your channel and 
that is not something that you want to have happen. So, and they could just unilaterally do that and it would happen automatically. So much better off to just switch this out, which is something that I'm planning to do. The second scenario is using YouTube's content. YouTube has all kinds of audio files and special effects files too, that is part of YouTube. This is real safe way to use audio in your videos. You know, a lot of YouTube creators don't want to use those audio files because they feel like they listen to it over and over again in YouTube videos. One thing to remember is if you're a YouTuber who is a creator, you probably consume a disproportionate number of YouTube videos. Your average person isn't watching as much as many YouTube videos as you are, and they probably are not familiar with all those audio files, and they also aren't paying as much attention to them. There are new ones uploaded all the time. There are really, really old ones that people don't even remember exist. You can probably find some that are going to be uh, ones that in your particular industry are not as well used. In YouTube Studio, it has the option for adding audio from the uh, YouTube audio library. And of course, this is audio that is part of YouTube. So you don't have to worry that you're going to get a copyright strike against you. But one aspect to be aware of is attribution. Some audio files are, have no restrictions. You're free to use the song in any of your videos, but others have required attribution. So for example, this song, you can use this in any of your videos, but you have to have this in your video description because this is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution license. You have to link to the artist. The third scenario is using licensed music. And this kind of divides into two categories. One is using usually a website where you pay a subscription fee. Don't use the free ones, by the way. Don't. You pay a subscription fee to get licensed music. Typically you pay a subscri monthly subscription and there's a whole bunch of ones that you can license, or you might pay $37 to, for each file, something like that. But you're getting five, the, these uh, audio files from a company. The other scenario is you license a song from an actual performer who hopefully both wrote the lyrics and composed the composition and then also did the performance. So if you want some music to use as part of your videos, you can look for royalty free music by just Googling that and then all kinds of different solutions exist. But what do you need to look for? Now, obviously you can just go to the YouTube music library and there you'll be safe if you use the various music options that are there. But let's say you're sick of this and you want something different. So what can you do? Well, there's going to be a couple of different options and you're typically going to find royalty free music. And I'm, these are just examples. I'm not endorsing these sites, royalty free music that you can subscribe to or ones that you can buy. But how do you select them? So I'm going to give you some tips for the issues that you're going to run into when you're looking at royalty free music. Now, the idea of royalty free is that you don't have to pay for every time that music is played. If you have to pay a royalty, that means every time the music is played, every time a video is played on YouTube, you'd have to pay someone five cents or something like that. And you do not want to deal with that. You want a fixed fee for the license. So that's definitely what you want, but how is that going to work? Now at some sites, a lot of these sites are subscription based and some of them you just pay a fixed fee, okay? Where you pay $29 for the, for the audio file, but a lot of them are moving to a subscription base because that's a really good idea for them as a company. So when you look at these subscriptions, one of the issues is, are you getting a license forever or just for the time that you have the subscription? So here's one website where you get the license forever. So once you pay for, once you pay for a license, just say you just have a license for a month or six months and you download those audio files, it doesn't matter that your video is on there for 10 years, you always have that license. So that's what this says. Any song you download 
will be used, can be used in perpetuity. That's what perpetuity means. But here's another website which says, as long as you have a subscription license, when you upload the content with our music, you'll be clear to use the content on all social platforms without further costs or legal negotiations. That's different. So what that means is you can use, as long as you had a subscription, when you upload the content with the music. So you had a subscription on the day you uploaded that YouTube video, but you can't make a new YouTube video six months from now or a year from now with that same music, let's say it's in your intro, if you cancel this subscription. That's a real big issue if you use that music, as I just said, in your introduction or it's some big part of your branding. But if that video just stays up on YouTube, you're okay. So you really wanna pay attention to what exact license you're getting. If it's a piece of music that you're gonna be using over and over and over again in all of your videos, you have to have a license that is in perpetuity that goes on forever versus a license that you only get when your subscription is active. Another thing you wanna look at is what happens if you get a copyright strike against you? Now, some of these companies are actually policing YouTube, okay? They're going on YouTube to see is anyone actually using their music who doesn't have a subscription? What's gonna happen? Some of them don't address this, but some of them expressly go into what happens. So this company goes into the process that they use. Let me go back and, and find. This section, okay. This company, Epide Ep Epidemic Sound, actually says what they do. If they get it to a content ID claim, they have a process for you linking your YouTube account with your account with them, and then they will tell YouTube that you have permission. So one of the good things about this is it tells you that they have a very specific process for this and also that they're keeping other people from using their content without permission. If you're someone who's really interested in having exclusive audio that you know every YouTuber doesn't have, this may be something that's very important to you. This is probably a more sophisticated company who's very interested in all those details. Other companies don't really address that issue at all. You also want to look at who the company is, what's their address, do they have an address anywhere, do you actually know where they're located, do they have information, like you look down at the bottom, do they have, can you find where they're located if you need to, uh, like are there are any human beings, are there addresses, are there, are there people involved where you can see their pictures, like you want to know that there's somebody there that if you have a problem where YouTube says that you don't have a license to this content, there's someone for you to talk to. There are some of these websites that I've been on, and I'm not talking about the ones that I've looked at right here, that are taking audio content from random places on the web and uploading it. Typically, they're the free ones where they say it's free content. And they actually have no rights over any of this. And they let you, and sometimes they're charging people to download it, sometimes they're not charging. And then you download this content, they have you sign something or the license says that there's no indemnification, which is something that's very important, and that you have no remedy against them if they actually don't have the intellectual property rights, the copyrights over that audio. And then if YouTube comes after you, there's nothing you can do. And if you go on their website and you can't even see an address, you can't even see a phone number, you can't see an email contact information, there's no human being names on, attached to this company, you can't even see what the corporation name is, what are you gonna do? So I highly recommend that you actually look at the company behind that website before you give them any money or before you download any audio files to use in your YouTube videos because you want to make sure that any content you put on your YouTube site or your YouTube channel 
you actually have a real license to the content because you got it from the actual copyright owner. Now, the final scenario that I want to make sure to mention is if you actually come up with the music yourself. Now, in that scenario, for you to have all the copyright ownership, you have to do the lyrics and the composition and the performance. If you're covering something that someone else wrote, then they have some copyright ownership over it. And that's the subject of an entirely different video. Again, this is Elizabeth Potts Weinstein. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, please go ahead and hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, I'd love for you to subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you guys next time.